Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about Azure DevOps pipelines. A pipeline is a way of automating the process of pulling source code out of a source control repository, uh, compiling that code, running any tests against it, just any process that's part of your continuous integration and continuous deployment process. So that if, as we automate those processes, we can repeat them often and find problems early on as we run them more frequently. Uh, for the example, I'm going to use my uh, web ASP.NET Core web application. I created uh, this in an earlier project or an earlier video. Uh, I've modified. I've actually added a test project to this that has a single unit test in it, and this unit test will always pass. It just says assert dot r equal one plus two comma three. So it's asserting that one plus two is equal to three. That will pass no matter what. I just wanted to demonstrate the fact that there that I can run tests as part of my pipeline. Now I've added this code, all this code, including the test, to an Azure DevOps repository. Here it all is. And what I want to do is now is automate the process of compiling and running these tests and making sure that all passes before I move on to the next step. And I'll do that through a pipeline. Down here on the left menu, if I click on pipelines, then it would list any pipelines that I have. I don't currently have any, so nothing is listed. But I can create one by clicking Create Pipeline right there. And it gives me some templates right here. These are all YAML-based. YAML is a markup language that uh, you can use to build your pipelines. Uh, Azure DevOps understands it, uh, and I kind of understand it, but I'm actually more comfortable using the classic editor. There's some things that are just easier to do in here, and it's more graphical. So I'm going to do that, but feel free to use YAML if you want. First thing they ask me is what, where is the code located? It's in this team project, this repository. It defaults to whatever the current one I'm in right now. And I want to use the master branch. You could build from a different branch if you wanted to. And then, then here are some templates of common things to do in a pipeline. You know, compile an Android application, uh, build a, a, a Docker container, things like that. I want to build a, uh, an ASP.NET Core application. So I could scroll down here and find it, or I could use the search box and type in ASP.NET and filter that list and say, yep, ASP.NET Core, that's the one I want. I'll apply that, and now I get multiple steps in the pipeline. First thing is it's going to get the code, so it tells it where the code is, and then I want to restore an environment, the, the version of the .NET framework, the um, the, uh, any NuGet packages have to be restored, and uh, and then I'm going to compile it. I'll build it, and that's what this does right here. It tells it where to find my project, and then I'll run any tests. It assumes the tests are in a folder with the name with the word tests at the end of it, uh, and that's what I did when I created it. I was careful to do that, and then I will publish it out to some folder so that I can maybe deploy it somewhere afterwards. And that's what this is going to do. Uh, I'm just going to take it as it is, and I'm going to run it. So right up here, I have the option of just saving it, or I want to save and queue it. And when saving and queuing it, when I save it, I want to add a comment, because I'm good about that. Let's see, this will be uh, initial revision. So when I queue it, it's going to queue it up to run on an agent. An agent is just a, uh, a computer that's going to run this thing. So it shows us queued right here. If I click on that, it, it, it shows me more detail. So queued means it's waiting for an agent to be freed up and available, and there now it is. It's been assigned to this job, and it's going through the steps right here. And let's watch through these steps, because we get quite a bit of detail here. First thing it did, it got the code out of source control, and now it's restoring the environment here, running through all that stuff, and it, it errored. So it skipped over the build. You notice it didn't do any of these things because if it fails here, we don't want it to proceed to the next step. Let's click on this and you'll see some details as to why it failed. Come down here, the red is the failing thing. The process, user bin.net failed with exit code one, packages failed to restore. Well, that's extremely useful, not. No, that's not a very useful error at all. But often you can scroll up a little bit and you can see an error was reported above here. And this one right above this actually gives us some information. Let's look at that. It says, the current .NET SDK does not support targeting .NET Core 3.1. Either target .NET Core 3 or lower, or use a version of the .NET SDK that supports .NET Core 3.1. And so let's take a look at my project. 
in here and see what version of the .NET Core framework I'm using. I am using 3.0. Let me just roll that back to 3.0. I don't think I'm using anything special in here. Let's try the same thing in this project as well. Roll that back to 3.0 and we can save all these and close them. Let's close all this stuff here and then commit my changes into source control. So come back here to this, go to changes and say .NET Core 3.0 mini rollback 2. Actually before I do that I probably should build this and just make sure it works. Build, rebuild solution, it succeeded and then I'll run it locally and see if I didn't actually break anything. Maybe I'm using a uh, a part of dot, .NET Core 3.1 framework that is required. And I'm not. Everything looks good here. So go back into here and then I will commit these. That just commits it locally. To get it into Azure DevOps I need to sync. Right here. And now my changes should be up in Azure DevOps. So let's try running this pipeline again. Right there and say run pipeline. And it did us ask us some questions here, you know, where's it, what pools are running on, uh, that's actually running on Ubuntu, um, and which branch, and so on. I'm just going to accept the defaults for this. Once again, it shows us queued, which is kind of interesting, but not really. Let me drill into it and see some more details as it's going. It's waiting for an agent. It has an agent, and it's going to go. Now, often in these videos, I'll actually pause the video and then come back. But I think this is really interesting to see the amount of detail and these steps as they're running. The first time you, especially the first time you you create and run a pipeline, uh, you want to see what you're doing and make sure it's doing what you expect it to do. You want to make sure it's not skipping anything, make sure that it's um, no errors are occurring, and even just the output of it. And this is all you can come back to this later and look at it if you want to. It's all being logged. So this uh, the whole process, I think I ran this a, a little while ago, and I think it takes about a minute and a half to run a simple ASP.NET Core application like that. So here we are. It restored it. It got past that. That's where we had the error before. It got past that. Now it's building it, so it's compiling this with the .NET framework. And you can see, let's see, so far, zero errors. Yeah, that worked. It's running my my test, my single test. It passed that test. All right. It's publishing, publishing the architect, and then it's just going to do some uh, governance and some cleanup when it's done. Now I'd like to show you, just for fun, what happens with a failed test. So here was my test. I'm going to change this to, uh, actually I shall leave this in here, but I'll add another test. In this one, test another two, I'll say assert that one plus two equals four, a test that I know is going to fail. I want to push that into my repository, so I'll commit it first. And then I'll sync here. All right, and go back over here. And I want to make sure that that test is in my repository. There it is. It's there. Uh, so now when I go back to my pipeline, I'm going to run this one again. Here I haven't really changed. I haven't changed anything in here. I've just added another test that I know is going to fail. Now I've queued up my my uh, pipeline to run. Let's see the details of it, and it's worth wading through some of this stuff. Um, what I expect to happen is it'll check out everything okay. It'll restore it all okay. It'll build everything okay. Everything compiles just fine, but when it gets to here, I expect to see 
one of the tests fail and I've set it up so that by default it won't continue on. It'll just log that failure and won't move on. That's what you want. You don't want to have, even if it compiles, if it's failing your tests, you don't want to continue with your continuous integration, continuous deployment. Restore is done. It's building. Looks pretty good so far. And now it's testing. And there it is. So it failed the test and it didn't publish it. It just published some logs out here and did some cleanups in here. And if I click on this, you'll see that yes, it did fail a test. Total test two, it passed one, and it failed one. In this video, I've shown you how to create a new pipeline and run that pipeline to uh, process an ASP.NET Core application. This is David. Thank you for watching.